As we finish up this week talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we're going to turn back to Acts chapter 2 and then chapter 3 a little bit. And as we do that, we'll, we're looking at, again, uh, Peter's sermons and the, also uh, the other apostles and some of the things they're saying in the very early days of the church after the Lord had been resurrected, ascended, and uh, the Holy Spirit had come. And we pick up the story here in Acts chapter 2 and verse 29 uh, as we did before, Peter is preaching, and we looked at that passage, verses 29 going on down before in, in verse 36. But I want to go to verse 37 now, as Peter is preaching this message. And the message is not only about the death of Christ, uh, but also the resurrection of Christ. It says in verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? So uh, yesterday we left off with the fact, another, another fact of the resurrection, a proof of the resurrection, is the changed lives of those who have come to Christ. Remember, Peter and the other apostles were absolutely devastated uh, at the cross when Jesus died. And they, they were hiding out. They, were, they felt they were probably the next ones to be persecuted, perhaps put to death. They were in no mood to go forth and proclaim a good news about Christ. But when Jesus Christ resurrected and when Jesus Christ changed them, uh, they become as bold as lions. And these early chapters of Acts demonstrate that, a radical change lives. And not only that, not only do we have the gospel record in Scripture, but we have it in our, our own lives and in the lives of countless millions going back for 2,000 years of people who've come to Christ and lives have been changed by the resurrected Savior. And that's a wonderful proof of his resurrection. But here we find the, the initial audience that Peter's preaching to want to know what they can do uh, now that they're recognizing the truth of the death and resurrection of Christ. Peter says to them, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for or, be, or because of the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Peter is calling for them to repent of their sins, including the crucifixion of Christ, and to, uh, to follow him, and they would receive the forgiveness of sins. And that would be the, the case. In verse 39, For the promises for you and for your children, for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. He, a wonderful promise. This is the good news, the great promise of salvation found only in the resurrected G Lord Jesus Christ. But of course, not everybody has received that message. What is the response well, the response of those who reject it, we go down to chapter 3, verse 11, and we find Peter is now preaching a second sermon after they had been an instrumental in healing a lame person. And they found in verse 11 that people were amazed at what they had done. But Peter is going to preach a sermon to them. He's not going to talk about healing this man so much. Uh, he wants to talk about the gospel. Verse 13, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, the one whom you delivered and disowned in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, but you put to death the prince of life. Now that's chapter 3, verses 11 to first part of verse 15. And he's talking now about their sin, what they had done. How they had crucified the prince of life. What, a, what an awful indictment. Uh, and that they didn't all appreciate that. But then he goes on to say in verse 15, the one whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. So Christ was crucified by you people and your awful rejection of him and your sinfulness, but God had another plan. And that plan was to resurrect his son from the dead. And so that is their rejection of this message. And then it goes on, we see in chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, how the leadership continues to reject the message of the risen Savior. Verse 1 of chapter 4, As they were speaking to the people, the priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them, being greatly disturbed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. They were proclaiming the resurrection. And they laid hands on them and put them in jail until the next day, for it was already evening. And so they, they do not turn to Christ like the group did before. 
They don't know what, uh, what they should do. They don't repent. They don't profess Christ. They throw the messengers into prison. And then we drop down to verse 10, and they, they, they tell them not to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. Verse 10 says, Let it be known to all of you, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name this man stands here before you in good health. Verse 12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. What a, what a message. The resurrection, Lord, res, resurrected Lord, and in His name and in His name only do we find salvation. The message of Jesus Christ, crucified and resurrected for us, is the message that brings people to Jesus Christ. Proclaim it, love it, embrace it, be joyful because of it.